1974, Lawrence Weisskranz, a psychologist, examined his patients who had suffered brain damage to their primary visual cortex. Though their eyes could still process visual information, their primary visual cortex could not, leaving them blind. Weisskranz presented them with an object and asked, which shape does this object have? Is it a circle, square, or triangle? Well, I am blind, you tell me, his patients would typically respond. Take a guess, he would encourage them, what about this one? When Weisskranz forced his patients to choose, the test showed some interesting results. By sheer luck, his patients would be able to get one out of three right. But in fact, they performed significantly better. This suggested that his patients could still see to some degree. You can imagine this not only stunned Weisskranz, but his patients as well. This phenomenon we now call blindside, a condition where people are still able to process visual stimuli in some way, despite being cortically blind. That is, blindness due to damage to the primary visual cortex. However, those with blindside lack the conscious awareness of seeing, thus they remain to be in the dark about their own visual abilities. Let's take a look at how visual stimuli are normally processed by the brain. Bear with me for a second. Visual processing starts in the eyes as light falls onto the retina. The signal then proceeds to the ganglion cells. The axons of these ganglion cells form the optic nerve together. The optic nerve sends the visual information through the optic chiasm where the nerves cross, causing the left side of the brain to process the right side of the visual field and the right side of the brain to process the left side of the visual field. The optic nerve projects to the nucleus geniculatus lateralis that lies in the thalamus. Visual information is then sent to the primary visual cortex, also referred to as V1. Here, a conscious experience of vision arises, and visual information is further distributed to other visual areas for detailed processing. The existence of blindsight was a controversial finding. V1 was always believed to be essential for vision. Now research in blindsight revealed that some visual processing exists separate from it. However, don't be fooled. V1 is of incredible importance to vision, None of those with blindsight are able to grasp a holistic view of what is in front of them. The visual abilities in blindsight patients are limited and specific, meaning they also vary from one patient to the other. Some of them are able to point at a moving object or follow it with their eyes. Similarly, others are able to sense an object in their visual field despite not seeing it. A third group is able to state the color, shape, and category of the object and a fourth group is able to process bodily and facial expressions. Instead of the cortical pathway that passes through V1, visual information seems to follow a subcortical pathway. The diversity of visual abilities in blindside patients suggests that each ability uses a unique pathway that doesn't include V1. Now, we do not know exactly which structures are involved for the different abilities in blindside yet. However, research is ongoing. There are, for example, good indications that effective blindsight utilizes the amygdala, a structure known to be involved in the processing of emotions. It would be fruitful to see if these subconscious visual abilities can be used to restore some of the patient's visual field. Perhaps through visual rehabilitation, patients can gain awareness of their remaining abilities. This is exactly what one study did. Nine participants with acquired cortical blindness were trained on visual stimuli. After the training, eight of the participants showed significant improvement. This sparked some hope for visual rehabilitation, especially when given shortly after the damage. Blindside is not only an interesting phenomenon, but a gateway to improve the day-to-day -day lives of the cortically blind.